I came to bury sleep. The cursed spite that ever I was born to set it Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? This is the excellent foppery of the world. When I moved to New York and started studying acting and looking for roles, Alan Snyder was doing a season in Shakespeare in the Park for Joe Papp, and uh, Measure for Measure was one of them. And uh, I'd, I'd gone to see Alan's production of uh, Carson McCullers, I think Heart is a Lonely Hunter, and uh, Colleen Dewhurst was in it. And I, I cornered Alan backstage, I said, look, you know, you're doing this play, Measure for Measure, and the, the, the guy that chops people's heads off, his name is Ed Boston. He wears a mask. You can't tell what color he is, right? And Alan says, okay, you got the job, okay. I'm large, as you can tell, but I was strapping in those days. Just got out of the army and all that. And uh, Joe, who was directing King Henry V, since I was in the company to play at Boston, he said, I'll use him as one of the spear carriers in the army, uh, the English army. He happened to give me the role of uh, Michael Williams, the, the man who challenges the king, not knowing he's a king who's in disguise, about all those dead bodies. He said, how, about, how do you feel about that? It's your war, man, you're responsible. Look at that, the guy has no legs and he has no arms. And, and the critics came out when we opened and said, no, oh, Joe Papp is taking a spin on uh, anti-war sentiments by using a black actor to protest the Vietnam War. That wasn't what it was about. I, he was, I was an actor who got a job carrying a spear, who had a few, a few lines. We started the production, probably the best production of that play I've ever been in, directed by Gladys Vaughn, a woman. I suspect perhaps that play is best directed by a woman, as probably is Measure for Measure, and other plays that are based on um, a woman's values. You know, and Othello, you say, well, look, she just had an affair. Let's get a divorce. You know, don't kill anybody, just get a divorce. Men tend to be a little shy on thinking. And with Isabella, well, it's just, your, it's just a roll in the hay. It's your brother's life we're talking about. Why not just sleep with the man and save your brother's life? but she's married to Jesus. Not many people understand that, I don't, but she does. And she can't just have a roll in the hay or any other form of infidelity to Jesus. The one jealous person in the play is Iago. He admits it, I take him at his word, and he not only makes everybody else have uh, green eyes, but the black eyes of racism. He, Shakespeare creates racism right in front of us. Her father loved me, Othello says. Take him at his word. The father of the, uh, the fellow Elope loved him. He, well, he didn't dislike him because he was black. But the night of the elopement, and who could blame any father? You, you steal my, my favorite daughter, for crying out loud. You could have come to me and asked for a hand. No, he runs off in a gondola, this big black one, who I love so much. Well, that, that ends the love. And Iago steps in and says, you know, they're not making the, the beast with two baths, with innuendos and things that the man hadn't thought of. He creates racism in the man's mind. He does that with every single character in a universe, ideally, where it didn't exist before Iago. You know, it takes something that's simple to work the way racism does. You know, can turn somebody's head on a dime. And my grandmother was uh, more of a racist than anybody I've ever known. She trained us that way. I'm a grandchild, but she made sure I was racially uh, defensive racism trained. I had to untrain myself, and uh, only I could do it. 
So, but consequently, I know more about racism than anybody would ever want to or should ever know. She uh, um, had witnessed rape, murder, lynchings, all that in her, in her lifetime. She saw no good in mankind, especially from white people. When she found out that Indians also had black slaves, she felt betrayed by them, her own people. She felt betrayed by black people who let it happen. I call her the crazy one. I call her the crazy grandmother. But I adore her in ways that I, I can't quite explain because uh, she was in touch with the drama, obviously, uh, on a lot of levels. The dramatic of life in my book. I describe her lifting me out of her oldest daughter's womb, her first grandchild. There's no doctors with masks and sterilized stuff around. She lifted me out. My Lion King moment, yeah, absolutely. And for a cycle of life, it continues.